Welcome to Tax Law GH and welcome to our Tax Academy video that will let you know how to approach your international tax paper. Why are we putting this video together, you may ask? We asked a simple question on social media and we got responses. So on Twitter, we put out a simple poll and we asked the question, which final level one paper do you need the most help with? And the response said international taxation was the area students needed the most assistance with. We replicated this exercise on LinkedIn and the response was quite similar. Once again, a majority said they needed help with international tax. So we put together a new solution on how to increase pass rates and ensure students find this paper easy because it's actually an easy paper if you ask me um, compared to the other paper. So this is an approach video on how to think about international tax and what we are going to do about this here at Tax Law GH. So in terms of an approach to the paper, think about it in terms of the materials you need to study. If you are studying for any other tax exam, oil and gas taxation, tax audit and investigation, you name it, direct tax, indirect tax, whatever paper you have at a CIT level, they are all based on local law. There is a certain law somewhere you can, you can refer to to read. There's a certain textbook that pretty much covers all the topics, but not so for international tax. International tax is a special paper. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's special. And the reason is simple, because there's nothing like international tax law. It doesn't exist. There is no single document anywhere globally that says this is the law in international tax. There are simply frameworks, documents, guidelines, conventions, agreements, that deal with the area of international tax. Don't forget that international tax simply looks at the relationship between territories, two countries that are sovereign nations that deal with each other and through their dealings, either at the individual or the corporate level, lead to some transactions that have tax implications, right? So the paper has materials or sources that you need to consult. So the first is that 2017, OECD Model Tax Convention. Together with its commentary, it's over 650 pages long. You clearly cannot read all of this. The next you need to consult is the 2022, obviously latest edition, Transfer Pricing Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises and Tax Administrations. Now, this also coincidentally, also 658 pages long. You cannot read all of this. The next is the OECD's BEPS uh, project, 2015 final report. This is the executive summary. It's a 48-pager. Do well to read this. It covers the BEPS action points, all 15 of them. You, you'd have a good appreciation of BEPS after reading this because you cannot write an international tax paper without knowing what BEPS really uh, entails. Then the OECD's transfer pricing guidelines on financial transactions. This is a 46-pager. That covers BEPS Action 4 and Actions 8 through to 10. You know, you also need to have a look at this document. And then the United Nations has a model tax convention, which mirrors or is supposed to serve as an alternative to the OECD model, but tailored to the needs of developing countries, right? This is a 930 plus page document including commentary, obviously, and you clearly cannot read all of these. We'll, we'll put links to all of these uh, materials somewhere in the description, right? But more importantly, what I want to emphasize here is that because there is no single textbook for international tax, you find different books trying to cover different areas. So some will cover transfer prices, some will cover international tax treaty law, right? And the like. But you wouldn't find a single book that does justice because of the nature of the subject. So in addition to these international sources, you also need to more importantly know how your local legislation interfaces with these international documents or international sources. So if you're in Ghana, I guess I'm speaking to Ghanaians most likely, the local legislation you should be considering is the Income Tax Act of 2015, Act 896, as clearly variously amended. And there are some relevant sections of the law you need to be very much aware of sections 32 on income splitting, 33 on tank capitalization, 34 on general land avoidance rule, 60 on branch profit tax, part seven of the act from section 101, which deals resident persons 
through to section 112 on foreign tax credit, you need to be aware of all of these, uh, among other provisions of Act 896. Another very important local law you need to know is the Revenue Administration Act of 2016, Act 915 as amended. Um, section 98 of this Act deals with international arrangements and it states, in summary, that wherever there's a conflict between local law and international or the provisions of international law, international law's provision will take precedence over local law. So here you can clearly see the emphasis or the importance our local law has placed on international sources of tax law, right? More importantly is how case law or decided cases have a role to play in your study of international tax. This is a rapidly developing area, especially in areas like transfer pricing. You would be amazed to know that there are new TP cases all the time. And you need to also be aware of how these changes in um, decided cases or the rulings of decided cases would have an impact on what you are studying um, in international tax and that very important area to be very aware of. And then more importantly, I'd say is recent development. This subject, international tax, is a rapidly developing area. You'd realize that there are so many things changing in this area you need to be aware of. An examiner will find a way to see if you are keeping up to date with different recent developments. So you need to also ensure you have an idea of what is changing. But because this is a lot of material to consume, our approach to international tax will be to find a way to distill all of this to the most relevant bits or the must-know areas if you have to pass your exam. We have a philosophy here at Tax Logic. After you pass your exam, you can read any of these documents in the comfort of your home whenever you want. You can make reference to them at any time when you're consulting as a tax advisor. But for your exam, you need an exam-focused approach that will ensure you pass your exam. Because like I always say, you do not get to become a tax consultant if you don't pass your exam in the first place, right? So passing your exam is paramount, and that is why we are designing this solution. So what are the must-know areas? What areas must you know? We've summarized on the screen the things you must know if you pass international tax, right? The first is basic principles. And you see some topics listed here. Obviously not exhaustive. The next would be the basics of double tax conventions and some articles that are must-knows, such as 1, 2, 29, 30, 31, 32, and the basics. Then basic double tax conversion concepts, such as residence and permanent establishment and provisions relating to business, as you can see in the box. Then provisions that relate to individuals, such as articles 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then provisions that deal with income and gains, such as articles 6, 10, 11, 12, and 13 of the OECD model tax convention. It's a topic known as limitation of benefits. You need to have an idea of what goes on here and the related best action plans. And then the main, one of the main purposes, I'd say, of double tax treats, which is elimination of double taxation. How does the OECD model tax convention go about eliminating double tax and double taxation? So you also need to know the methods proposed by the treaty and articles 23A and 23B, and then also need to know the non-discrimination provisions and the article 24. Then there are dispute resolution mechanisms. So we'll look at mutual agreement procedures and article 25, and there's any other alternative dispute resolution mechanisms available and the relevant best actions, and such as 14 and 15. E-commerce in the digital economy has become a very important area in international tax, and you need to know the essential um, areas here. So here we we'll look at the impact of e-commerce on permanent establishment, the relevant best action point, next issues, and definitions arising from PE as a result of electronic commerce globally. Then important issues such as harmful tax practices, controlled foreign corporations, and exchange of information among several others. Then we'll look at the essentials of base erosion and profit shifting and all 15 actions. 
and the important parts of those. Then transfer pricing. You cannot, you can never pass an international tax paper if you do not know something about transfer pricing. And it's in every single exam, right? So what you need to know about transfer pricing and um, things such as the global formula apportionment, the arm's length standard, and how this links to Article 9 of the model tax convention then the methods of transfer pricing and something called functional analysis so here we'll look at the methods proposed by the oecd tp guidelines in line with local legislation which will be the transfer pricing regulations of 2020 li 2412 which also derives its source from the oecd transfer pricing guidelines document so you need to also know something about functional analysis and comparability. And then special um, transfer pricing topics, such as um, hard to value intangibles, low value adding intra-group services, something known as cost contribution arrangement or agreements, then um, revised safe harbor guidance. And then more importantly, transfer pricing documentation. You'd realize that then, there is a renewed or revised three-tier approach to documentation. You need a local file, a master file, and country-by-country uh, country and reports where relevant. Then you also need to know something about advanced pricing agreement or APAs. And then you need to know the link between transfer pricing and base erosion and profit shifting. Then still on transfer pricing, you need to know advanced transfer pricing areas, such as um, intra-group financial transactions, dealing with intra-group loans, credit guarantee fees, factoring and receivables, loan pricing, thing capitalization rules, and the like. Then things around business restructuring and guidance on TP aspects of business restructuring also quite examinable. Then compliance issues, right? So the documentation that must be kept, um, cross-border risk assessment, cross-border transfer pricing audits, and the like, and other issues under transfer pricing that you need to be aware of, such as um, the OECD or G20 base erosion and profit shifting project, and customs valuation and transfer pricing as they will deal with um, um, global developments going forward. So if you know all of these topics not into too much detail but have a fair idea of all of these you're on your way to um, passing your international tax paper but it's the approach to study all of these you'd realize these are scattered in different materials like i mentioned how do you bring them together how do you consolidate your knowledge and that is the focus of our approach here so what we recommend for steady international tax is do not over specialize you don't know everything about article 5 and know nothing about article 4 but it's good to know enough about article 5 and enough about article 4 to know a little bit about every single thing on the screen in addition to um, the local law we mentioned and decided cases as and when relevant and more importantly um, recent developments in the area of international tax so what are we bringing to the table we are launching our international tax crash course session. This will be a session that will cover a number of things. First is this will be an exam focused um, program. No time wasted on unnecessary concepts. It goes straight into how to apply your knowledge to pass the exam. How will we do this? We utilize a very well proven method of study international tax, which is the use of case studies. So we use complex case studies to tackle multiple areas at a go and deepen your understanding and obviously help you know how these issues would appear in any international tax exam you sit. And we'll provide you with essential materials and summarize and versions of things you need to read so you don't bother reading too much, right? So you have access to essential materials you need to read. Then you have um, access to the community, obviously. We have a community of students studying um, with us or who have studied with us in the past. So you can obviously be part of this community and ask any questions you'd, you'd want to and have um, tutor response or peer response from your fellow students. And then, um, more importantly, is the guaranteed tax academy quality we bring to the table. Um, if you go through comments to our videos, um, 
comment under our social media posts, you find several students who um, are pleased with the work we are doing and how we've helped them pass their exam. So the International Tax Crash Course session will be launched and we will start in January 2023, targeting the February 2023 um, CIT exam setting. And we'll repeat this for every exam setting. It's also available on an on-demand basis if you'd want um, special attention. Um, if you'd want to reach out to us, obviously you can hit us up on social media. More importantly, we'll put details out here on how to sign up to the Crash Course session in Duco. So if you're not following us yet, follow us on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and obviously subscribe to us here on YouTube so you are not left out on um, this program. If you're interested, you can leave a comment below indicating your interest in signing up to this crash course session. Um, details around pricing will be made available, I'm sure, to be a very affordable program for everybody, obviously. So yeah, this is our solution to helping students pass international tax. So be on the lookout for additional communication on the crash course session. Until then, catch you on our next video. Do enjoy the rest of your day and bye. Thank you.